Recently, I bought this agonizer on the RPF by user TOS Phaser, which is uh, Bruce out of Oregon. So, when I got this piece, I realized just in looking at it, nothing about it looks like a first generation casting, which is what he's supposed to be selling. And I said this publicly, and a lot of people got upset. I never said I had any proof to just to confirm. Just in my over 20 years of experience of working in resin and plastic, I was saying, based on that, nothing about it looked first generation. So, and then, of course, you know, a lot of people got upset, saying, where's your proof? Well, when did I say I had proof? I'm just going on from my personal opinion. And... Uh, from my experience. So, since that time, I thought, hey, I should get some examples of what recasting looks like. Because sometimes I, I'm asked to uh, speak at shows and conventions. And this would be a good example. So, here we have Bruce's. And this one here is from Cool Models. Now, it looks like they did one little tweak here on theirs it's just they, they who, either they or whoever they cast this from put more of a dome shaped piece otherwise there's really no variation here this this shape is all the same same contours this one came from California a fellow had it in his collection he said that he got it from a former set designer in California so same thumbtack looking uh, lower button here and this one a friend of mine got this and sent it to me it was this is the one from New Moon which is he got his finished and oh geez you know isn't this fun yeah that that's it just makes it there. That just makes the whole piece. Anyway, so what do we know about uh, casting? When someone makes a master pattern, and then they make a mold, and they make a resin part, the resin part will be slightly different. Well, that resin part, if it's recast, it will the recast pieces will be smaller. And then if those recast parts are recast again, it, you know, just each time something is recast, it gets continually smaller. I saw one in the, one uh, example. I used to have a first generation Klingon communicator from Richard Coyle and about 12 years later I saw another one. It had been recast so many times it actually lost three-eighths of an inch in length. So that's how much shrinkage can go on. So here's Bruce's. Let's take this one. So you've got the little needle moves when I adjust this. Let's get a length on this. Okay. Compare that with Bruce's. About eighth of an inch smaller. So, huh? How is that? So, if this is a first generation casting, how is this recasting larger? Hmm. Oh, and let's remember that when Bruce was selling his agonizers on the RPF, he admitted to taking the photograph and using it in his sales thread, the photograph that was uh, on the New Moon Props website. So, hmm, what coincidence. Okay, let's be set for the Cool Models Agonizer. Okay. And once again, about eighth of, eighth, eighth of an inch there. So 
again, how is it that this one is bigger than the first generation casting? Hmm, I don't know. And this is a very interesting bit here. Um, the clarity. Look in, in around. I've got these gloves on, by the way, because this thing, there's, there's oil coming off it, and I don't want to get it on my hands. So. And just the clarity, the detail. Look how much crisper it is here than it is here. And how much more around this button. It's more defined. The casting is better. This one's got more of a curve. So, how is it, if this is a recast from Bruce's first generation casting, why does this one look better? I mean, of all of these, of all of these pieces here, which which is the smallest? Bruce's. Which is the less clear? Bruce's. Why? His is supposed to be first generation, yet his looks the worst of all of them. So, something to think on.